Greetings everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your host Captain Ryan. Today's video is going to be a second Sharnhorst video on the trap map. Yes, that's right. Two in a row, both in my personal favorite battleship. Well, one of my personal favorite battleships. I have a few now. <laughs> anyway, if you're watching this on the day that it's uploaded, that means that the new patch is dropped for the North American server, which means the new German destroyers have dropped, and I am eagerly awaiting and looking forward to playing them. Mostly because I want that Z-52. I think that ship looks dead sexy. And from what I understand, it'll probably fit my preferred playstyle pretty damn well. A lot of you have been sending me um, additional replays, and I've had an opportunity to watch a few of them. And I think a uh, few more of those replays will be making their way onto my channel here with wonderful commentary. As the map gets started up here, I've spawned down closest to the A cap point. So I'm going to go to A. I've got a few other ships in support with me including a destroyer in front, who is going to be a critical part of this battle, at least early on, while he provides the initial spotting. Received. And I've got a friendly ship behind me, the Pepsi-Cola, who's going to come in and do what he can. Just like yesterday's video, this video is going to feature me doing unspeakable things to the enemy team with my Sharnhorst. But unlike yesterday's video, they don't actually manage to get a Kraken unleashed in this battle, which is a little disappointing considering the amount of damage I managed to do. And, equally disappointing, considering how many ships I almost managed to kill. <laughs> but, they haven't yet added the kill assist ribbon to the game, so... For me. As I push up into A, enemy smoke screen has popped up. It indicates to me that there's a destroyer up there. So I don't want to continue pushing forward into it. I've been set on twice now. There's a Cleveland up there and a Russian cruiser, so you know they're going to be able to put out those repetitive fire starting rounds that are the most annoying things in the world. However, the Russian cruiser gets driven away by friendly torpedoes from our destroyer. and is forced to pretty much disengage from the whole situation. There are enemy torpedoes coming in, and no doubt if I had continued on my course, I probably would have had torpedo beats those. The enemy Cleveland is still sitting in that smoke screen, though, and so long as he is sitting in there, it's going to be a difficult thing to hit. But the smoke screen is dissipating, and he reveals himself. He's not moving very fast yet, because he's just getting out of that smoke screen. I get shots off there, and I do reasonable amount of damage, and manage to knock out one of his gun turrets. Anytime I can knock out the gun turret of a Cleveland, it makes me happy. Decided I'm going to go ahead and turn back around, get my ship back into the A-cap point, and try and capture. The situation at this moment is the enemy team has a destroyer up here still. They've got a half-dead cruiser, a full-strength cruiser, off of hiding in the back. But they also have two battleships that are up here. However, I feel absolutely confident that I should be able to take on those battleships. It's really just the cruisers and the destroyers that I'll have problems with the cruisers because they can light me on fire, and the destroyer because obviously it can stealth torpedo me. However, I'm going to go ahead and get bow on to the battleship so that he's not going to be able to do much in the way of damage to me. It's one thing that the Sharnhorst is particularly good for, and that is going bow on, or at the very least, at a substantial angle. Russian cruiser in the distance there, he was broadside on, and I decide to punish him with a nice fat citadel and managed to get a regular penetration as well. There are more torpedoes coming in there. It tells me that the destroyer is still up there and still paying attention to what's going on in this direction. 
However, spotted them with more than enough time, so I'm going to be able to torpedo beats them. I'm not sure if that spread of torpedoes was a widespread or not, but certainly by the time it reached me, it was wide enough. Let's slip right through there, and I'm sure you could make a your mom joke now. Enemy Cleveland extremely low health as he tries to slip behind the island. I managed to citadel that Russian cruiser yet again and almost managed to take him out of the game. Unfortunately, just not quite enough. Can I secure the kill? Come on, get my shots out there. Let's try and pick up this kill. That would be great. As you can see, we've already managed to lose one of our Pensacolas, who is now raging in chat about being killed. Blaming the team for, well, him being in Pensacola. Sorry, buddy, it's the Pensacola. If you ended up pushing too far forward, this happens. Not too many targets now to shoot at, so I decide I'm going to put in shots to the broadside of this battleship. But I know that Cleveland, because I've been paying attention to the minimap, is right around the corner here. So I'm going to get shots out as he appears between the gap, and I finish him off. More torpedoes coming in, turn to dodge them, and I am going to dodge them nicely. There's the enemy destroyer. And, of course, that enemy cruiser still up there on incredibly low health. Come on, shots. Can I finish him? More torpedoes again. Those look like they were maybe a narrow spread. But I do manage to avoid them. That cruiser, RNG Jesus, why do you do this to me? That cruiser is now sitting on less than a thousand HP. And I can't seem to land the killing blow. Come on! Just let me finish. Finished the bastard already. Put him out of his misery. Nope, those shots still can't even manage to do it. And the shots coming in there. Friendly ship. Look like they're going to finish him off. Yes, they do manage to snag my kill. Well, that's only one kill stolen from me, and that's not too bad. But we'll see more examples of the same coming up. As we push forward, this Colorado giving me a broadside up there. Again, I don't know what it is with battleships and their desire to present a broadside to Scharnhorst. Yes, the guns are small. Getting a Citadel even on a broadside battleship of this range is not necessarily the easiest thing to do unless it's in Iowa. That doesn't mean, however, that I can't do a whopping amount of damage to you. And speaking of a whopping amount of damage, I take damage coming in there. And it's managed to knock out one of my gun turrets. Normally, I would probably have hit the repair button and gotten that gun turret back up. But in this particular case, both of those ships are incredibly low health. As you can see there, the Colorado's just been taken out. And this Bayern is almost dead. I managed to get my secondaries on him, and hopefully I can finish him off with secondary guns, because I like the close quarters expert flags. Nope, I managed to take him out with fire, but it's still my second kill. However, that's the only other kill I'm going to get in this battle. Not for a lack of trying, though, as I managed to massively wreck this Indianapolis, just before he disappears behind that island. A little disappointing that I didn't get a second Citadel and finish him off there. Again, as I say, because I didn't get a Kraken in this battle, and yet I did a lot of damage to a lot of different ships. The enemy team has managed to secure the C cap point, but my team has also managed to secure the A cap point. The only enemy player currently contesting B is this Indianapolis, and he's got himself into a situation where he's basically bow on to a Miyoko. And that Miyoko, well, he's got just as many guns, if not more of them, and he's got more health, which means this Indianapolis is not going to have a good time. Even as he tries to back up around behind the island and get out of line of fire, it's just not going to happen for him. And that Miyoko really doesn't have to do much more than fire high explosive at the front of his ship. 
and constantly set them on fire. And that Indianapolis is gone. The team's lists are still pretty close. The enemy team still has two destroyers, one of which you can see there on the mini-map is being chased down by our Pepsi-Cola. <laughs> off all by himself chasing that destroyer. That destroyer is probably just like, come on, dude, knock it off. Go join up with the rest of your fleet. But because of the positioning of both of those ships, it really just means that there's three enemy ships, and all three of them are up at sea, and I'm currently the most forward ship who's going to deal with them. And we're going to see all three of these ships pop up in a few seconds. As you can see, I'm detected, and I'm not entirely sure what exactly is detecting me. It took my brain a few moments to register that I'm probably being detected by a destroyer here. However, about the time my brain was thinking that, about the time my brain registers that, the enemy battleship pops up and I'm thinking, oh, he's detecting me. So as I take shots out there and take shots in, I manage to dodge the return fire, but the battleship takes one right there on the nose. Not too much damage, but not too bad. He's pretty much full strength, and he's a tier 8. Now the question here is, how close is he going to let me get? If I can get my torpedoes into him, I can have a really good chance of ruining his day. More importantly, if he gives me a broadside, just like the Iowa, he's going to be in a world of hurt. There is the enemy Kagiro who has now popped up. And this was actually the destroyer who was detecting me. Because he's popped up, I've got him flagged for secondaries. And I'm turning hard in because, well, it's a destroyer that's popped up well within their torpedo range. My guess is he waited until I was coming around that island and fired off his torpedoes. If he was smart, he would have waited longer for me to push up and ambushed me as I came around behind the island and there would have been nowhere for me to go. For whatever reason, he decides not to stay seated in his smoke screen, and he's well within my secondary range. So my secondaries are going to start ripping into him. Combine that with the friendly ship behind me just pumping fire into him. That destroyer really starting to regret some life decisions there. But if you'll notice, I've got a cruiser pushing up who is very close to me, and this North Carolina, who is getting awfully close, and I'm trying to see if he's going to continue sailing in this direction, and if that's going to be the case, hopefully I can get him with torpedoes. Managed to get a nice fat citadel on that Miyoko, fire off my first set of torpedoes at the North Carolina and lose one of my gun turrets. Yes, that's right, the Scharnhorst actually loses a gun turret. Wow, that's what I get for not repairing it the first time. Managed to Citadel that New Orleans, um, that Miyoko yet again, hit torpedoes onto the North Carolina, and he's going to hit me hard. He manages to secure a citadel on me as I'm turning. I guess this angle is just really easy for 16-inch guns. The citadel. Fire off torpedoes. The sky is not trying very hard to dodge those torpedoes. Almost managed to secure the kill on the Miyoko. Almost managed to secure the kill on the North Carolina. And almost managed to secure the kill on the destroyer. Well, that's three, and that would have been the Kraken Unleashed if I'd managed to get them. Probably a double strike too, given the close combat and short nature of this engagement. Unfortunately for me, it's no luck, and my team is going to finish off both of the enemy ships in close succession. 185,000 damage done, 701,000 credits earned, Confederate, High Caliber, and Dreadnought. All in all, a very, very good battle here in my Sharnhorst. Again, a little disappointed I didn't get to secure the kill on the Indianapolis, that Russian cruiser, the Kagiro, the North Carolina, or that Miyoko there at the very end.
Top of the team for XP earned well above 2,000, and well above the next nearest guy on my team. Gives you an idea of what the Sharon Horse is capable of in my hands. Anyway, that's it for today's video, folks. If you like that video, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below. If you'd like to get semi-regular channel news and updates, you can do so by liking and following me on Facebook. If you'd like to help support me and my channel, you can do so by visiting my Patreon and donating there. If you'd like to watch me play World of Warships live, you can do so by following me on my Twitch channel, and I do plan to do more World of Warships live gameplay in the future. And if you've got a replay that you'd like to submit, be featured on my channel with my wonderful voice, please do so by sending it to my email, PMing me via YouTube or messaging me on Facebook. And as always, you can find the links for all of those in the video description down below. This is Captain Rye saying I'll see you next time. Signing off.